are you a nice guy? And have you found yourself wondering why the girls that you actually like end up choosing arseholes over you? Now, the mega confident masculine guys, now maybe you could understand that. But the arseholes, it makes no sense, right? You could offer these women so much more. You could be nicer, you could be kinder, you could be more attentive, you can help them when they're feeling down. So this video might sting a little bit, but somebody's going to have to be honest with you. In a nutshell, if you're a nice guy, it's not the nice stuff that you do that is the problem. It's the stuff that you don't do that is the problem. Now, this video is actually a shorter clip of a bigger video. If you want to watch the full video, click down in the links below where you'll see it shared in the description. So hopefully what you're about to see will explain why confident women prefer confident men. But some women nonetheless still choose assholes over nice guys. And here's why. Okay, so let's look at some traits versus nice guy traits. Now, very often, a nice guy demonstrates these ones in blue in abundance. Now, more than often when they're demonstrating these, there is a bit of a subtle ulterior motive, which I'm going to touch on a little bit further. However, on paper, very often, a nice guy offers things like being very affectionate towards their partner, they're very caring, they're often very kind and very gentle and very empathic, they're very tuned in to what their partner wants and needs and often showing that in a very strong form of affection. They're generally very, very generous. Like they give and they give and they give, and sometimes they give way too much. And again, I'll touch on that a little bit further. And they're often great listeners and very attentive, very switched in to what the partner needs, very willing to listen and be there for them. They're not bad traits to have, right? But obviously, you can have those traits and not be a so called nice guy as well. Now, this is where it starts falling over a little bit for the nice guy. When it comes to boundaries, often nice guys have very loose boundaries. So more than often, they will allow anything to happen at their own self-compromise. Um, they let go of what's important to them, all often with the motive to please the other person. What the other person wants is more important than what I want. And they often just kind of do anything and don't appear to have any boundaries. When it comes to difficult conversations, now difficult conversations can be quite scary for a nice guy because it can potentially lead to conflict and conflict often they're very avoidant of. So if a difficult conversation comes along, a nice guy is much more likely to appease and um, accommodate what the other person wants as opposed to going into those conversations or generally just avoids them altogether. When it comes to leading rather than following, often nice guys tend to follow more rather than lead more. And when I talk about lead, I don't mean uh, domination or controlling other people. I just simply mean somebody that's willing to make decisions and stand up for something that is important to them. And sometimes not even that important to them, but just express a preference of what they'd like to do as opposed to allowing the other person's needs to be the priority. Therefore, they're technically following and compromising on what it is that they would like. So they technically spend more time following than leading. I've written here, doesn't abandon self to please others. Now, a confident guy wouldn't abandon themselves to please other people. And more than often, you can still please other people without abandoning yourself. But more than often, a nice guy is somebody that does actually abandon themselves. They compromise on their own truth. They compromise on something that's important to them. Even if it's a massive inconvenience, they still go ahead and do it because they're much more likely to please the other person. Okay, so here I've written being socially confident. Now, a nice guy is typically socially awkward. Now, this can show up in a number of different ways. Maybe they say something that's a bit inappropriate or they say something that's a bit awkward socially. And it's likely to be more distorted in situations where they are surrounded by other people who are legitimately alpha or masculine or more confident. And often they feel a need to overcompensate, which might mean that they come out with something that maybe they regret later, or maybe they don't even notice it, but other people might pick up that it was a bit inappropriate. So I've written here, emotionally independent. And what I mean by that is that typically nice guys can be quite codependent, which, which basically means that they're reaching for the other person to fill a void that is missing in them. Codependence is always two ways. That would mean and suggest that the woman indirectly is doing exactly the same thing. However, when somebody is codependent, it means that there's very much an entanglement of stability that they're leaning on each other rather than being emotionally independent. So self-awareness. Now, typically a nice guy doesn't have a high level of self-awareness because if they did, they'd stop doing these things. They're often so attached to what the other person wants, what the other person needs, what the other person is thinking, that they've completely lost sight of what's important to them. And therefore that is a bigger picture of why a lot of these are actually manifesting in the way that they are. Okay, so let me add some context 
context to how this shows up in a nice guy's world and why it's so frustrating for them. So I'm going to demonstrate it here with an NG for nice guy, an AS for arsehole, and finally I'm going to abbreviate masculine to mask. Now, what you'll find here is that people who are a nice guy typically have these traits here. So tick, 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 tick. But typically nice guys have a heap of these and mostly lack these. So I'm gonna give these a cross. Which brings me on to an arsehole. And often you hear nice guys being frustrated because they've been with a girl, they feel that like they've been so nice to them, they've given them everything that they could do, but often they'll leave them and then seemingly end up with an arsehole. But I'll show you what's really going on here. An arsehole can sometimes be these. So I'm gonna give them a half. Now an arsehole is often demonstrating some of these, and if not most of these. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that the arsehole is doing it in a confident and a fair and a really lovely way, but they are showing classic signs that they are holding boundaries, that not uncomfortable having difficult conversations. They do often lead. So I'm gonna give them a tick for these. And what often happens when you speak to a woman having dated what's seemingly known as an arsehole, they'll often say that they have have these experiences with these guys saying, yeah, but when they're nice, they're so nice and they're so sweet to me and when, they're, when it's good, it's amazing and he's so gentle and he can be this and he can be that and he can be really generous and he can be really giving, yada, yada, yada. So what the woman is basically doing is she's admitting and um, accepting a compromised version of these because in that process the, she is getting these which are actually so, so important. And this is where the difference of a very, very healthy, confident masculine, I say alpha loosely because there are different definitions of the word alpha. I simply mean it from a place of high confidence, willing to lead and very fair person. You can still have all of these, but you have these as well. So it looks like this. And that, my friends, is why women prefer a healthy masculine guy to a nice guy. Now, I would be very confident to say that if you ask any well-adjusted, confident woman on this planet and you said you have two options of the guys that you can date, you can have a guy with all of these and a limited amount of these, or you can have a guy with all of them full stop, a healthy, well-adjusted, confident woman, I would put my last dime to my life that they will always choose the person with all of these, not just these here. And this is why it's not really about what the nice guys have, it's what they don't have that is actually losing them their catch. Now I'm very aware in this video, I've talked a lot around the nice guy and the woman. It's just because it's a typical phrase, but it actually isn't gender specific. It can be flipped, I'm aware of that. So if you ask a very, very confident man, and you ask him what he's looking for in a woman, he will want all of these as well, but he will also want a woman who is um, boundary-based, a woman that is willing to have difficult, fearless conversations, a woman that is willing to lead as well as follow. He doesn't want to carry somebody all the time. He wants somebody that can make decisions and stand up for themselves. He doesn't want a woman who's just gonna completely abandon herself and compromise and everything to please him. That is what confident people find and attractive in other people. So it, this isn't gender specific, but I'm just using the terminology of the nice guy in order to demonstrate this video. I'll also add that I'm very, very aware that there's lots of relationships out there where the, the, you know, the phrase is women wear the trousers. And I actually work with a lot of those women too. Now, at the same time, whilst those women are wearing the trousers, typically what they've ended up in is a codependent relationship, which makes it very difficult to separate because there's a lot of dependency on the other person to feel their own self-worth. However, I can assure you these women still get very frustrated at the fact that they're dating guys or married to guys that aren't stepping into the power, not leading enough, not making enough decisions, not coming across as assertive enough, and they're still finding it very frustrating even though they're still in that relationship with them. If you summarize all of these and you have a so-called nice guy with these particular traits here and not these traits here, what you basically end up having is a very affectionate servant. And let's face it, that's not particularly attractive. And I'll go even one step further, that if you meet a guy that is very, very confident and sure of himself and has all of these and has those as well, 
basically this list, that is sexy. There's no two ways about it, it's sexy. And I'll tell you even on a further deeper level why a nice guy, the psyche behind why it isn't sexy, because explain to me why having those and not these is any much different from a parent-child relationship. This goes without saying, if you look at a parent-child relationship where they've, you know, there's a lot of affection, there's a lot of love, there's lots of care, lots of giving, and it's going both ways as well. However, when it comes to a parent-child, it's more likely that the parent will be the one holding the boundaries rather than the child. It's more likely that the parent will be holding the difficult converse conversations and the child is much more likely to be conflict avoidant and avoiding those difficult conversations. The parent is much more likely to lead rather than follow, whereas the child is much more likely to follow rather than lead. And I can go through all of these, but just as a final example, a child is much more likely to abandon themselves to please the parent than the other way around. So, this is why, let's, let's cut to the chase, that is not sexy and it doesn't take a rocket science to see why that's not sexy. And this is why typically those relationships long term, one of the first things that falls by the wayside is the intimacy in such relationships because it does end up having a bit of a dynamic of parent and child. So hopefully from watching that, you will have a much better insight to why people choose the people that they do and why often nice guys seem to be shunted to the bottom of the list. But of course, these are just my thoughts and opinions. What are your thoughts and opinions? Comment in the comments below and let me know what you think. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell for all future content. Other than that, have a great day. Cheers.